Today, we are gonna break down a comprehensive report that compares the new Snapdragon X Elite processor inside of the Surface Laptop 6 to not only the Surface Laptop 5 and the Surface Pro 9 5G, but also the MSI Protege 16 inch AI PC, and crucially, the 15 inch M3 MacBook Air. This is a report by Signal 65, and they go through a range of different things, giving us a super detailed report that looks at not only battery life, but performance, AI modeling, productivity, media processing, graphics, noise, and so, so much more. So with that being said, let's get into this. Of course, once I get my hands on these devices, I will put these through my own paces, but this report by Signal65 gives us an amazing overview of these new processors and what they're capable of. Let's start by looking at the system configurations, and we have a great lineup in the Signal65 results that we have in front of us. All the devices have 16 gigs of RAM and a 512 SSD, except for the MSI Protege 16, which has 32 gigs of RAM, so double the amount of RAM here. We are, of course, on the left-hand side, comparing the Microsoft uh, Surface Laptop 7 with the Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite processor. And this device has the NPU that is capable of 45 trillion operations per second, or 45 tops. There is, of course, the Surface Laptop 5 with the i7 12th gen and a 16 gig RAM. This device does not have an NPU. There's also the Surface Pro 9 5G that has the ARM SQ3 processor and a much slower Qualcomm Hexagon NPU. This is the device I've used for the past year and it has been flawless. And critically, we have the MacBook Air 15 with Apple's M3, 16 gigs of RAM and Apple's neural engine. One thing to note is that all these devices minus the Surface Pro 9 5G are either 15 or 16 inch screens. And you can see down the bottom here, we have all the applications used, which were Geekbench, Cinebench, Google, 3D Mark. There's a range of tests here that we're gonna run through as well. First thing we're gonna look at is the physical system analysis. And this is the heat that these devices generated during a Cinebench 2024 multi-threaded benchmark. You'll see on the top left-hand corner, we have the Surface laptop with the Snapdragon processor. And this device did actually get quite warm in its peak at 50.3 degrees Celsius. On the right-hand side of that, the Intel variant was actually three degrees cooler at 47 degrees Celsius. The Apple MacBook Air was the coolest device there at 45 degrees. And the MSI Protege with the Intel Ultra 7 processor was quite hot at 56 degrees, but this was under heavy, heavy load. What is more important though for me anyway, is of course, if you look at the thermal performance during the single core, um, and this is more of a realistic picture where, let me just grab my highlighter here, where the test says this is a more standard workload and it paints a new picture for this SOC. What you'll see is that both the Surface Laptop and the Apple uh, Air, they have a very cool running operate, uh, temperature at 37 and 35 degrees respectively. So not a lot of heat coming from either of these devices. The Laptop 5 and the MSI Protege, on the other hand, in standard or very simple tasks, they were still getting really quite hot. So even though under heavy, heavy workload, all the devices did get, get quite warm, under standard sort of everyday workloads, the ARM processors inside of the Laptop uh, 7 and the M3 MacBook Air were a lot cooler than their Intel counterparts. One thing that Intel and AMD x86 devices are known for are unfortunately the noise that comes out of these devices, out of their fans when they are operating. I'm gonna zoom in here and we're gonna take a closer look at this graph at the amount of sound that was coming out of these devices. One thing to note is that the M3 MacBook Air is the fanless version. So there would have been zero sound coming out of the Mac just because it does not have a fan. I'm gonna grab my highlighter again. And what we'll see here is that both the Surface Laptop uh, 7 and the Laptop 5 showed similar sounds under heavy consistent workload. Uh, and of course the Ultra 7 was running noticeably louder, hitting 39 decibels. The SQ3 in the Surface Pro and the MacBook Air, they are both fanless, so they didn't measure on this scale at all. But again, in more standard workloads as what we see on the right hand side here, this is where the new Surface Laptop and the X Elite processor is incredibly quiet. 
it is just above noise floor level at 26.3 decibels. And then of course the MSI system with the Intel Core Ultra was just as loud under fully load as it was under general workload. So if we have a look at this diagram here, let me scroll up. On the left-hand side here, this is the more heavy workload. And you'll see that the Snapdragon Elite hit 32 decibels, whereas under standard workload, it was just above the floor at 26. Whereas that MSI, it was the same noise pretty much at 39.5 under heavy workload or 39.3 under quiet or standard workloads. The Surface Laptop 5 also had a big drop in terms of the noise going down from 33 to 28. So the Snapdragon processor has made a big difference here in terms of the noise and is a big difference, especially compared to the Ultra 7 processors. Battery life is another key metric that Snapdragon and Microsoft have been really promoting with these new Snapdragon X processors. And Signal 65 have confirmed that the Surface Laptop 7 is the longest lasting system that they've ever tested when it comes to video playback. And this is the 15 inch Surface Laptop 7, where it does have over 21 hours of video playback in a single charge, which is to me, that is multiple days of usage. Uh, it does say that what they, the way they tested it was, they had a looped H.264 video running at 150 nits brightness and wireless connectivity was disabled. So if you have your wireless uh, turned on and then you have the screen brighter, obviously it will drop in terms of that battery life. But this was the same setting for every single device. It also does say that the MacBook Air offered 16% less video playback than the new Surface laptop. So it has beaten out the 15 inch MacBook Air, which is known for having exceptional battery life. Let's go ahead and zoom in on the uh, chart here. And what we know is that the Surface Laptop 7 in orange here has 21 hours of video playback. The Laptop 5 doesn't it even provide half of that with only 42% battery of what the Surface Laptop was able to produce. And then of course, the MacBook Air comes close at 84% of the Surface Laptop 7's peak battery performance. So in terms of battery performance of the Snapdragon X chips, they are definitely performing and overperforming when it comes to battery life. Let's go ahead and look at some performance benchmarks. Now, starting with Geekbench, Signal 65 don't give us the exact numbers that were put out by these processors, but they do give us relative performance. And of course you can go find say the M3 MacBook Air numbers online and then base it off that. But let's go ahead and zoom in to this chart. And of course, we are comparing both the single threaded and the multi threaded processing power. In single threaded processing, the M3 MacBook Air actually has a 15% advantage, which is completely reversed in the multi threaded performance, where it is 15% slower than the new X processors. But what is even more important and interesting here to me is the fact that last year's generation of Surface Laptop 5 has a massive drop in performance, about 20% when you're looking at single threaded, but a whopping 36% when you are comparing it in the multi-threaded tests. And the Surface Laptop 5 was no slouch, uh, but seeing a 36% improvement in performance is just unreal. Of course, Intel with their latest seventh series ultra core processors, uh, they're sitting just under 10% slower in both of these scores. Um, but what you see here is that the new X Elite processors are definitely putting out some really high benchmarking numbers. In Cinebench 2024, it is a very similar story. The standout here is on the right hand side where the Snapdragon X Elite is up to 30% faster in sustained multi-core performance compared to the M3 MacBook Air, which is a big performance change. If we zoom in, it's a very similar story as to what we saw with Geekbench in the fact that the M3 does beat it out by about 15, or in this case, 17% in single thread. But in that multi-thread, it is a massive 30% decrease when you're looking at the M3 MacBook Air compared to the Snapdragon X Elite. And then if you're looking at, which is even crazier, last year's Laptop 5 and Surface Pro 9, 
they are 0.47% as performant as the Snapdragon X Elite. And Intel is almost there on par at 95% performance. But that device, remember, did run a lot louder and a lot hotter. So what you're getting with the Snapdragon is not only a device that is more performant than the Intel and the MacBook counterparts, but also compared to Intel, runs a lot cooler and a lot quieter, which is a big benefit. And then it is also running with a lot longer battery life. So the Snapdragon chips are no joke. One of the most difficult, but also most telling signs of this new device's processing power is how it performs under modern AI workloads. There aren't a lot of programs right now that can really test and push these devices to their, their limit. So I will be interested to see how future tests actually help these devices perform and show their capabilities as well as their pitfalls. But in the way that they've tested it so far, they use the Procon AI Compute Vision, which has a range of different tests inside of it. And the numbers are quite astounding. Comparing the Snapdragon X to Intel's Core Ultra 7, it has over three times the amount of AI performance. And comparing it to Apple's M3, it has over twice as much performance in that MPU. Just remember the MPU in the new Snapdragon X processor is capable of 45 trillion operations per second. So it is definitely no slouch. And you can see here comparing it to last year's Surface Pro 9, as well as the current MSI and MacBook, it has a huge performance increase. And of course, there was no neural processing unit inside of the Laptop 5, which is why that device scored a zero in all of these tests. Media processing in the Handbrake 1.7.3 test is where the Intel device had the clear advantage at 40 and 44 um, percent more performant than the Snapdragon X processor. But that is because Intel does have some of the best media processing in, and acceleration in the market. The cool thing here though for the Snapdragon X processor is that it did beat up Apple in both tests by about 25 and 15% respectively. Those tests were of course encoding 4K H.264 to 264, and of course 4K H.264 to 265 as well. One of the standouts here for me though is the fact that last year's Surface Pro 9 5G is almost as 50% uh, as performant as the new Snapdragon X processor, which shows a massive increase in the ARM architecture when it comes to video encoding. Web browser performance with Google Chrome is another clear win for the Snapdragon X, even though the M3 MacBook Air beats it by 40 and 27% respectively. What we can see here is that there is a massive increase in performance compared to the Surface Pro 9 5G with ARM, where it is almost 40% slower than the new X processors. So what I'm seeing here is generation on generation, there is a massive increase with these Snapdragon processors. And in both tests, it still manages to beat out last year's Surface Laptop 5 with the 12th gen i7, as well as the current Intel Core Ultra 7 as well, even though it beats them out by a smaller margin. To me, this is a massive win when it comes to the Snapdragon X, but of course, Apple does have that advantage here when it comes to Google Chrome web browsing. Performance of Microsoft 365 on these devices is actually a little bit funny. If I zoom in here, what we'll see is that the MacBook Air 15 inch is actually 3% better than the Snapdragon X processor. But if you look at this line, they're all basically about the same when it comes to running the Office Suite. The big standout here for me is that last year's Surface Pro 9 5G scored all the way down at 62%. I've been using the Surface Pro 9 5G for the past year and it has been a flawless machine when I've been running the Office apps. If I can get a 40% increase in that performance just by jumping to a Snapdragon X Elite processor, I can't wait to actually upgrade this machine because it has been awesome. And if I've got such a performance jump from the SQ3 to the new Snapdragon X, I can't wait to see how the applications run on the new devices. Graphics performance is an interesting one when it comes to testing cross-platform and cross-processor uh, systems. So this will be a bit harder to break down. So let's go ahead and zoom in here. What you see here is that there are just a few tests where some devices just could not run the, the tests that we're looking at. So it does make it a lot harder to get a clear standout winner. 
if we do look at the wildlife extreme test, there is a 30% increase from the Snapdragon X where the M3 MacBook Air beats it by about 30%, which is a large margin. But again, the standout for me is if we look at last year's Laptop 5 and Surface Pro 9, there is about a 50% increase between these devices and the new Snapdragon X processor. It's a very similar story when we are looking at the Solar Bay Unlimited. The Snapdragon X sets the benchmark. That is it be, uh, bested by about 30% by the M3 MacBook Air. If we scroll down into the comments though by Solar65, it does tell you that the Snapdragon X is still roughly twice as performant as a 12th Gen Core i7 and SQ3. And um, the GPU on the MacBook Air does show its muscles by about a 30% increase here. Um, and then of course the Intel device is using Intel's Arc integrated graphics, which aren't all that strong. Uh, and then in the Solar Bay ray tracing test, the Snapdragon does have hardware ray tracing, but it's still uh, behind by about 30% the Intel Arc uh, and the Media Lake as well as the M3 architecture. The last thing that was tested in the Signal 65 benchmarking test was the emulation performance of applications on Windows 11 on ARM. It does say that Microsoft is very proud of their new emulation technology that is a part of Windows 11. And I can tell you for the past year using the Surface Pro 9 5G, the emulation has gotten really, really good and it's only set to get better with the new Prism architecture. The two devices or the two programs that were tested were uh, the Pugnet Lightroom Classic and Blender 4.1. Uh, what we can see here is that the Surface Laptop 5 basically came in exactly the same, uh, just slightly beating out the MSI with the Intel Core Ultra 7. Uh, and when it comes to Blender, of course, the higher score is better. It is slightly slower than the M3 MacBook Air, and it's about half as fast as the Intel Core Ultra in the Blender test. But again, the standout for me here is the massive performance difference we see in both uh, the tests compared to the Surface Laptop 5 and the Surface Pro 9 5G. On the latter, the Surface Pro 9 5G is 74% slower in Blender, and it couldn't even run the Lightroom Classic, uh, which just shows how much better emulation will be on these. Uh, that just shows how much better emulation is going to be on the Snapdragon X Elite processors and Windows 11. My biggest takeaway from this report by Signal65 and these new Snapdragon X processors is that they are definitely no joke. We are seeing huge improvements when it comes to device performance, battery life, noise reduction, heat reduction, and AI workload utilization. They're giving both Intel and Apple a run for their money. And the cool thing is these are the first chips of their kind. So we're earning to see more and more improvements as these devices get better and newer devices get released by Snapdragon and Microsoft and their partners. Let me know what you guys think about these new Snapdragon X processors in the comments. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know your thoughts on the new Snapdragon X processors in the comment section down below. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Bye. In the wild, where the trees sway, there's a fox bright and gay.